Lucha Underground made its uh, return to the airwaves this past week, season four, the premiere episode. It has been eight months since Ultima Lucha Trace. Uh, in that time, they have lost a, a bunch of people from the roster. Uh, they've had to move out of the old temple. Uh, honestly, the new temple doesn't look radically different from the old one, but that whole gritty, dark look that the show had um, is sort of gone. Or at least it felt like it was sort of gone here on, on this episode. It doesn't help when you have bright blue and yellow ropes. I'm not sure who made that call. Uh, that was the wrong call to make. I'm not a fan of that. I'd like to see that change. I know where it's rope color. It's not a big deal, but it, it kind of is a big deal because the aesthetics is a big part of what made the show, you know, enjoyable. And it's uh, it's quite the shock. To, to, <laughs> you're watching a show like Lucha Underground and you see these bright colored uh, ropes. Uh, but otherwise, I mean, again, it largely, I think, retains the basic look from the first three seasons uh, with the new temple. Show opened, and I'll get into my thoughts here as I as I go along, because to me, this was a mixed bag, this show. This, this show, I'm happy it's back, but I was also left kind of disappointed. Uh, it opened with the funeral of Dario Cueto. Uh, they killed him. They actually killed him off, or at least so we think. This is a show, after all, with people using superpowers like teleportation so who's to say that we've seen the last of Dario Cueto but for this season at least it looks like he is dead and in his place as the new leader of Lucha Underground is his father Antonio Cueto played by the same actor only made up to look like the uh, Hispanic version of Gandalf from Lord of the Rings with a glass eye Uh, we learn from the FBI agent who shot Dario to death that it was Dario's own father, it was Antonio, who put the hit out on his son. Because he felt his son was weak. So this led to first shot inside the new temple. And uh, Dario's father gets in the ring slowly, because again, he's an ancient man at this point. And it led to him announcing that Pentagon would be defending his Lucha Underground Championship on this show in an Aztec Warfare match. See, he's already a... a a worse promoter than his son was. His son, if you remember, Dario would talk about how it doesn't make any sense if I don't have time to promote my matches. That's the whole gift of the gods thing. You can't just cash in gift of the gods on the spot. You have to give a, a like a weak heads up so that Dario, who they used to call him the proprietor of the show, they don't they didn't call his father that here, but you know, as as the promoter, Dario had enough sense to know that hey, I need at least one week to promote this big championship match. Already, his father is already screwing things up. So he announces that there's going to be an Aztec Warfare match for the championship here on this show. Of course, Aztec Warfare is their version of a Royal Rumble, only better, uh, and with pinfalls. Usually the match lasts pretty much the entire hour, uh, or 40-something minutes with commercials, I guess, whatever it is. But usually it lasts for the entire show. This one was no different. Uh, They've done three Aztec Warfare matches prior to this. All three of which, I'm sorry to say, were better than this one. This was easily the weakest of all the ones they've done. Uh, and I say that again, I'm, I'm very happy the show is back. It is, especially now with Raw being the way it is lately, it's nice to have an alternative. Uh, and I just, I, I enjoy the show, but I just, this was so disappointing to me. I did not really like this match hardly at all. All the rapid fire eliminations, it felt like an old WWE Divas Survivor Series match where you get as many women into the match as possible and then you have a new woman being eliminated every five seconds. It's like, what's the point? What is the point? It's like having a two out of three falls match where the first fall ends in a minute and the second fall ends in about two and a half minutes and the third fall goes on for about 15 or 20 minutes. Why even bother having a two out of three falls match in the first place? Is Aren't you supposed to be building drama? How can you do that if the first two falls are over in the first three minutes? I never understood that either, but... Uh, yeah, just they were just knocking people off here left and right. A new person would come down, and then 30 seconds later, they were pinned, and they were walking to the back. It felt like a WWE match in that way, which is not good. That's not what I want on this show. They brought back people like Chavo Guerrero. Oh, yeah, my, 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 you guys know, my personal favorite here on Lucha Underground. I was just begging for the return of Chavo Guerrero. Uh, they brought back Hernandez. Who literally lasted all of 30 seconds, which probably for the safety of the people involved in the match was a good thing. Uh, He didn't have a chance to uh, border toss somebody into retirement. 
So he didn't last very long. They had Mr. Pectacular out there, Jesse Goddard from Impact Wrestling. He wasn't in there very long. But the, 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 the quickness of the eliminations, the editing, I don't know what it was. The editing and the jump cuts in this match were awful. They were just awful. It was so distracting. Uh, just not good. Not, not nearly as, as good as the earlier Aztec Warfare matches. Uh, however, however, that is not to say that it did not have its moments. Katrina came out with Mil Muertes, and I can never, ever say anything bad about that. Uh, she looked, uh, incredible as always. And even Mill, you know, Mill came out looking like a house of fire and he, he just looks like he's built like a brick shit house. This guy, he comes out, he's killing dudes left and right. And less than two minutes later, he's gone. <laughs> he was eliminated just like that. I mean, he came in, at least he got to kill some people first. He was spearing people down. Uh, but as quickly as you could blink, he was gone. And, and obviously this is going to play into a longer story. So whatever that. Like, him being eliminated early isn't such a big deal, uh, because it is going to play into something. Katrina had this disgusted look on her face, and she left. She stormed off. So that's the start of that story. Uh, and that wasn't the only story they tried to tell in this match. They, they, you know, one thing they do very well here in Lucha Underground is they are able to weave multiple stories into one show, into one match, which is really how a Royal Rumble is supposed to be. Uh, one of the reasons I love some of those earlier Rumble matches so much, uh, because they were able to sort of walk and chew gum at the same time. They could tell more than one story at a time and actually were pretty good at it. Uh, I think they've lost their way in that respect, but you know, another, another story here, Dante Fox. Now Dante Fox, AR Fox is seemingly gone. I'm guessing from Lucha Underground, unless he's hurt. Uh, but he was not here. Last we saw him on the, uh, Ultima Lucha special last season, he was one of three, uh, stars who won the trios tag team titles. So on this show, the other two members of the team, which is Killshot and the Mac, came out, and Antonio Cueto was in the ring, and he's, uh, or maybe, was he in the ring? I don't remember if he was in the ring or not, but he tells him, look, you know, Dante Fox is nowhere to be found, and so the next person, you guys are going to start Aztec Warfare, and the next person who comes out at number three, whoever it is, he's going to be your new partner. He's going to be the new trios uh, tag team champion. And it turned out to be uh, Son of Havoc. So Son of Havoc came out, and he is now uh, officially, I guess, uh, one-third of the uh, Lucha Underground Trios champions. And he is no stranger to the Trios titles. He held them with Angelico and Ivalice, still my favorite Trios combo on the show. So the match served its purpose, I suppose, to kind of get over the fact that Pentagon is is a dominant champion. It was cool to see Pentagon back doing his thing, breaking arms. Uh, always love to see that. Phoenix to me was the star of this match. Some of the stuff this guy does is just unbelievable. Uh, he hit this backwards double foot stomp off the top rope onto Mil Muertes' head. You would, you would have had to sedate me. <laughs> you would have had to put me under in order to get me to agree to even ever take a move like that. Uh, that was brutal looking, but it came down to Pentagon and Marty the Moth Martinez, and Pentagon won, of course, broke uh, Marty's arm after the match. Antonio comes out, he congratulates Pentagon on his victory, he announces that next week he will defend his Lucha Underground Championship again, but this time it'll be against Antonio's one remaining living son, and that being the monster Matanza, and that is how they went off the air, so... There was good stuff on this show, and, and I'm looking forward to seeing what they have in store for the remainder of the season, but I would be lying if I sat here and told you that uh, I thought that this show kind of lived up to uh, expectations. It didn't. I thought that Aztec Warfare on the whole was very disappointing. It uh, was was nowhere near as good as the other ones, and I'm not sold on the new temple. If they moved, they had to move, so you'll get used to it. I'll get used to it. You'll get used to it. You know, the rope colors and everything else, the setup, it's not that big of a deal. Um, because they can still retain sort of that gritty, grungy feel of the show with the backstage segments that they do, which are still top-notch. I mean, there's still there's no wrestling television promotion, TV show uh, that does those segments as well as Lucha Underground does. They are still number one. So they can still retain the feel of the show that way, but... Um, yeah, I just I, I wasn't really a fan at all of that Aztec Warfare match. Tommy Dreamer was another cameo in the match. You know, Tommy Dreamer was Tommy Dreamer. <laughs> he came out and 
he did what you would expect Tommy Dreamer to do and uh, did some stuff with thumbtacks in the crowd, which was kind of wild. Um, but yeah, it just, uh, you know, it almost felt as though they were borrowing a page from what WWE would do in a Royal Rumble match as opposed to what they themselves have done in their own Rumble matches in the past. And I'd like to see them get back to that and not kind of fall into the formula that, you know, quick eliminations, let's trot out, you know, these these mid to lower card guys just to kind of fill spots in the match. It really did. It felt too much like a Rumble to me and not like an Aztec Warfare match. I wanted to mention this real quick. 